The story of the steel drum begins in Trinidad in the 1930s, when street band skirmishes led to the ban of skin drums. So people improvised and made drums from thick bamboo poles, car parts, tins, and finally oil barrels. They came up with a whole new sound without skipping a beat. When people first started pounding on steel instruments, they inadvertently dented them. That's how they discovered that each dent produced a different pitch. So now steel drums are dented on purpose. To make a drum head, they cut a piece of steel into a circle. They weld a metal ring onto it, and then they position a metal shell or skirt on the ring and weld it in place. The drum is held in a big clamp while a worker pinpoints the drum head's exact center. He places a measuring guide there, using it to mark radial lines from the center to the rim. Each line is 10 degrees apart. As the drum turns, he draws circular lines to make a grid. Now he pounds the head of the drum with a pneumatic hammer, using the grid as a guide to ensure the work is done evenly. It takes eight hours of hammering to transform the drum into a bowl-like shape. This is called sinking the drum. Then, with a special guide for curved surfaces, a technician measures out another grid inside the bowled drum head. He outlines the notes that are about to be hammered out. In this case, a high B and an E. Then he hammers down the steel around each one to shape the note. Getting this right takes skill and a lot of time, up to 50 hours. He trims the drum skirt to the correct length and tapes a stencil of the company logo onto the skirt. This device is an electrical etching machine. It uses acid and electrical current to eat away the steel exposed through the stencil. Now a technician wields an ultrasonic thickness probe. She presses it against a note. Using high frequency sound waves, the probe measures the steel's thickness to within a fraction of a millimeter. She grinds down the notes where needed. Using a scribing tool, she scratches a line around each note so it'll be visible to the player. Now it's time to make sure they've struck the right note. To tune a steel drum, the technician plays a note with a stick and then dents it with a hammer to adjust the pitch. You have to have an ear for this job. He hammers the note until it sounds right. Sometimes he turns the drum upside down to knock out a note from the underside. For the fine tuning, he relies on an electronic tuner. A microphone delivers the sound to it, and the lines on the screen tell him if the note is in tune or not. Next, he burns the border of each note with a blowtorch. Then he cools it down with water. The process tempers the steel, making the notes more resonant. He tunes the drum again, checking for flaws. After the drum is chrome-plated, he tunes it a final time. It's taken 120 hours to make the steel drum. Now it's time to take a break and party to the steel band sound.